Hi everyone! Um, today I just wanted to do a little quick review of Blossom and Roots Kindergarten Curriculum. I know it's that time of year when everybody's trying to pick what they're going to do for the fall and we actually started this back around Chinese New Year in February so we're about 15 weeks into the program so I felt I was kind of at a good place that I could kind of explain how it's going and what we're doing and how we feel about it. Um, and also Blossom Roots having a sale right now so it would be a good time to pick it up if you decide you want to do that. Um, so what I have here is the teacher guides. I like to keep them all together in, in one book. It's just easier for me. Um, they are they are separated by subject. So like the, the first one here um, is like the language arts and reading one. So I just put these tabs on them to, to mark each section. So you can see like I have that here and then and then I just put little bookmarks for the week. So that's the reading and then um, I just go to my bookmark and, and uh, where are we? We're in week 15 here. So you can see we're reading Winnie the Pooh now. Um, yeah, and then like another one here, I have the uh, the nature study and math and science. And then I just go to my bookmark and find it here. So that's kind of how I organize this. And then all of my daughter's worksheets, I keep in three, win three ring binders. Um, yeah, so I think what I'll do first is just go through what we do for each section. So the first one is the language arts. And what we do, I said we're doing Winnie the Pooh right now. When you first start the program, you do some Aesop's Fables each week. And then you do a few picture books. You do some like Frog and Toad, um, Horton Hears a Who. Um, and then this is our second chapter book. We did My Father's Dragon. And now we're on Winnie the Pooh. And we read one chapter each week. Um, and then after we read the chapter, you have um, three sheets that your child will have to do. So the, the first one is the copy work. And so far it's mostly been letters. Um, I think we've had two times where it's been short words like cat or tug. Um, but usually it's a letter for the first part, for the first, however, 26 weeks. Um, so what they'll do is they'll write the, the uppercase R and the lowercase R. And then... And then um, they have to draw some things that start with that letter. Um, so here, you know, she has red and rat and room. Um, I like to write what it is that she's drawn because uh, sometimes it's a little hard to tell what it is, but I want to come back to it later and, and look at it, you know, and like memories when they're older. So I do like to write in what it is she drew. So that's the, the first sheet. Um, the second one is the, the journal. And you can see here, it's like if you were leaving on a trip, what would you put in your backpack? Um, and so my daughter would say her answer and I would scribe it for her and then she draws it. Um, and this was based on in the story, Elmer was traveling to Wild Island and he had to pack his backpack. So this is what she would bring. Um, and then the last one is my favorite part of the, the language arts with Blossom and Root. It's the narration. And um, what's really great, so after you read your story, um, you have your child tell the story back to you and you write down what they say. And lots of times she says really, really cute things. And I just love it because you get to see like what part of the story they really liked and, and, and kind of what resonated with them and how they're learning it and processing it. And I think it's just such a wonderful activity. Um, so after I scribe for her, then she, then she draws the picture. So here, this was in, uh, if you're familiar with the story, um, Elmer had to get away from the angry tigers who wanted to eat him, so he gave them bubblegum. So this is the bubblegum that he gave the tigers. Cute. Okay, so that's what you do for the for the language arts. So that's the first section. Um, and then the next thing they'll do is the, the nature study. So the nature study for the first half, um, you're going to be doing reading from the Burgess Animal Book for Children. You read about a chapter each week. And you'll have a little, usually like a little activity to go along with it, like a nature study activity. So, for example, we were doing one with like diggers a few weeks ago. So then the kids had to, um, we made a tray with candy and rice and they had to dig through the dry rice to find the candy. Um, one week uh, we were doing prey, so we had to go to the park and we had to find places that prey would hide in the park. So we had to like look for little like holes in the ground and things like this. Um, and then... You also will do uh, a one worksheet each week. Um, usually it's just drawing an animal. So you can see here, um, we were doing skunks this week. So that's 
my daughter's little skunk, which is very cute. And then sometimes they'll have to just like say something, a fact or something from the story that they remember. So I just write down what, what she tells me. So skunk's right with the bum. <laughs> So that's pretty cute. So yeah, so each week they'll they'll do that. Um, usually it's um, drawing an animal. We've had uh, like draw a tree. We had one. She had to draw um, what was it like a, a burrow under the ground. Um, so yeah, it's, let's see. Oh yeah, here it is. Yeah, so this one. She had to draw a little burrow for the animals that lived underground, and she she was pretty sure the little. Um, Bunnies would eat cashew nuts, so those are those are cashews. <laughs> For, uh, yeah, so it's cute. Yeah, so they do. That's the other activity they do. Um, and then let's see. The next part would be the the math and science. And for the Blossom and Root Kindergarten, the, all the math and science put together, they call it the space mission. And so each week, your son or daughter gets to go on a mission to space. So for in the beginning, you're doing stuff just talking about like what you need to survive in space, what you would need in your spaceship, um, the you have to build your spacecraft. You do you do something with blocks and and patterns and and this kind of thing. It all goes together. Now where we are in the program, we've actually blasted off into space already. So we've already like been to the sun and been to Mercury and um, yeah, we did uh, Venus. We did Venus this week and then and then next week we get to to go to Earth. Um, so what goes along with the space mission? You have a captain's log. So you can choose to actually do, if you want to do the captain's log every day, it's kind of just a, a you know, a day of the week, the date and the month. Um, you could do it every day in like your morning basket or something. We just do it once a week when we're doing the space mission. Um, so yeah, so she just has to color in what day of the week it is and the month and, and the day. Um, and then usually the assignment will have something that she has to draw to go with it or maybe make a pattern or or maybe a simple equation like it you had 10 oranges and you ate two oranges from your supply how many do you have left stuff like that um, so this one she had to draw her favorite constellation so she chose Canis Major so you, hopefully you can see like the stars are in there and the dog to show that it's the dog yeah um, so it'll be something like that um, sometimes you can you can um, add your own kind of sheet to go with it. One week she had to do like uh, matching gloves and and boots for her spacesuit, and I'm a terrible artist, so I could not draw the the gloves and the shoes by myself. So I just went online and I just found like a coloring sheet, like an astronaut coloring sheet, and then I just had her color that instead. So you could do you could do like that if you're not artistic, like. I am not. <laughs> so that's the space mission. Um, then we have the picture study, which is really fun. It's the art stuff. Um, so the beginning of the year we were doing Monet. So each week you get assigned um, a picture that your children have to look at. And then after they tell their feelings about it and you talk about it, then they get to paint their own kind of in the style of. So this week um, the assignment was to do a watercolor and then do details with um, oil pastels. Hopefully you can kind of see that. So Kieran did little um, flowers and butterflies and yeah, it's very cute. Um, so we did that and then after Monet we moved on to Picasso. So we have, you know, the blue period. So for that week, um, we just did blues. So we got to work with making blue darker with black and making blue lighter with white and kind of experimenting with all the different shades of blue. So that was fun. Um, and then it's not all painting. You do some other kinds of art. So we, we did this um, Picasso. You can see all the shapes and stuff. So we had to cut out cut out shapes and make our own people. So you do a few different kinds of things. It's not all just, just painting. There is a lot of painting, which my kids are now very fond of. They weren't really big on the painting before, but now they get really excited. And even my, my younger son, he's not even two yet. And when he sees me get the paint supplies, he's painting and he comes over. Um, and he actually, this was his blue period piece. It's gotten a little, 
a little torn up, but he likes to join in and, and do the class as well. So that's the painting study. Um, as you go along with a picture study, there's also a composer study, and it's um, suggested that you just, you know, like put the composer like on YouTube or something and have it have it play in the background while you do your painting and stuff. Um, and then the last, let's see, the last part is the history of me. So that's the kind of the the history component with Blossom and Root, instead of doing, um, you know, your country's history, well, you do do a little bit of your country's history, actually. Um, instead of focusing on, like, world history or something like this, um, you kind of do the history of your family and where you live. So it's really nice because we're actually not living in America, and a lot of programs have American history, um, but here we can change it, and we can do the history for where we are. Um, so, yeah, so anyway, so let me just show you a little bit. So... So, for example, the history of me. This is one we've done um, in back in week six. She had to she had to draw the family. I don't know why I'm the tallest, but I'm the tallest on this one. Um, so sometimes she draws. Um, sometimes we do cut and paste stuff. So like this one, I thought it would be really hard for her to try and draw the movie. So we just you know went online and and found pictures. So this was the the song when she was born was number 1 and then this movie came out the month she was born. You know. Um but as you go as you go farther into this this history of me you actually do stuff for uh, like where you live. We haven't gotten to it yet, but I'll just show you. So they would go on and do stuff like this. So what it looks like in my neighborhood. So it's all about um their own lives and what they do. So I think it's really nice cuz um it's not as abstract to them, right? They can really understand like what's in their family and their neighborhood. So it's a really nice little project too. And it'll be a wonderful thing to look back on later, I think. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of all the parts of Blossom and Root. Um, we usually do like one thing a day. So like we'll do all the language arts on one day and then we'll do all the picture study on one day, all the nature study on one day, all the space mission on one day. Um, I know you, you could split it up if you wanted to, um, like if you if your child couldn't listen to a whole chapter of a book or it would be too much to do the book and the worksheets, you could separate it, um, but we do it all in one day. Um, and then I'll just show you, like this is kind of how I organize it. I love planners. So what I do, it's kind of like a checklist. What I do is I, I, I write down all of our, our subjects, right? So here I have my blossoming roots. So we have that the LA, the picture study, the nature study, the space mission. and in the morning, I'm just like, what do I feel like doing today? And then that's the one that we do. And when we complete it, I cross it out. Um, the big thing for us is the, the nature study. The weather's not too mm, predictable where we live. So some days it's very, very hot, maybe too hot to go outside, or it will just start raining and it will be pouring and we can't get outside. So I kind of have to wait until the morning to see how the weather will be if we can do the nature study. So... And I also don't like being like, oh, on Monday I have to do this because then when I don't get it done, then I get all frustrated and get more behind. But anyway, but as you can see, we're doing other things too. We're actually, we're doing the Torchlight Pre-K and uh, Right Start Level level A and Good and the Beautiful Language Arts. And then we have a, a journal I got off of Teacher Pay Teachers and um, our handwriting book, book too. So everything just as we do it, I just, I just cross it out just to give you an idea of kind of what our week looks like. Um, and then how I organize the binders. All of, I, I showed you my, my teacher book. I put it all in one book and I, I did all that double-sided. Um, for the student book, I do it single-sided. Um, you could maybe do it double-sided, but I just felt like with all the drawing and stuff, I didn't want it to bleed through on the, on the other page. And um, I decided to do the three ring in that with this instead of using my my binding machine because I know if I left the notebook out with my daughter, she would start just going through and coloring on every page. So I like being able to just take out just the page we need and giving it to her. Um, I think at the end of the year, I'll take everything out and 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 bind it to save it. Um, but but for now, I like having it in here. So like in this binder, I have the the nature notebook and the the history of me in this in this one binder and then I have the big binder for the LA. The LA is a lot um, but as you get to the end you actually have some word cards and stuff that you have to cut out so you're not um, 
show you. You're not going to have to keep everything, yeah, just to give you an idea, right? So some of them just have word cards that you'll cut out so that they won't be part of the binder that you'll keep forever. Um, yeah, so this one's the, actually the LA and the space mission. Sorry, I should make it seem like it's just the LA, but it's the LA and the space mission. Um, yeah, so that's how I keep that together. Now the time we spend, um, you know, it's not too bad. I would say maybe 45 minutes a day is what we, what we spend on the lesson. Uh, you know, if we're going out for the nature study, we might stay out a bit longer, depending on how the weather is and what the kids are doing. Um, but like the LA, like reading, reading the book and doing the three worksheets, I'd say about, yeah, about 30, 45 minutes. Um, I do try to do the day that we do the LA, if there's a movie for it, we try to watch the movie too. So like with Winnie the Pooh, we'll watch the, we'll watch the video of whichever chapter it was that we read. Um, and then like Horton Hears a Who, we watch the, the video for that. Um, so that would take more time. Uh, but the, but everything else, yeah, it's pretty pretty manageable. Um, for the space mission, I sometimes will add in extra space books, so it might take a little bit longer, but that's all. Um, and then, okay, so I think that's kind of all for all the materials. Sorry, this is getting kind of long. Um, I just wanted to talk about some of the common concerns I hear people talk about with this material. Um, the number one thing I hear people asking about is if it's seasonal, if you can um, start at any time of the year. We started it in February and have had no issues. Um, it's It's been perfectly fine. We also live in a place where there aren't really seasons. We kind of have hot and then rainy. Um, so <laughs> we wouldn't have seasons anyway, even if we started in the fall. So you can really, you can start this curriculum anytime and you'll be fine. Um, and then the other one is maybe the outdoor space. Do you have a place where you can go and you can do the nature study? We actually live in one of the most densely populated places in the world. Um, we're, we're in a, in a district in, in New Taipei City, Taiwan, and it's crazy crowded. There's like 40,000 people per square kilometer, something like that, so it's insane. Um, and we just use the local park that's across the street, and it has worked out great for us. We don't, we don't really get to see that much wildlife. We're kind of stuck with pigeons and chip, uh, squirrels and, and rats <laughs> sometimes. We've spotted a gecko here or there and some butterflies, but, but that's about it. But it's okay. It works for us. So it, it, if you live in a city, this curriculum will work fine. You don't, you really, you don't have to worry about, you know, that you have to be out in the countryside with like an acre of land. You can totally do this in the city. Um, the other thing I hear people talk about is the leveling, like if they should start with the early years volume two or if they should start with the kindergarten. Um, my best advice is to think about um, the read alouds and what your child can handle. Um, the Burgess Animal Book for Children doesn't really have pictures um, and it's, it's very wordy. <laughs> It's a nice way to say it, I don't know. Um, it, is, it is a difficult book. It's actually the first book that I've read with my daughter that didn't have pictures on every page. Um, so it was kind of a challenge for her, but we've kind of gotten into the rhythm. So it's been going okay now. I do a lot of silly voices, you know, all of the animals, you know, Peter Rabbit, and everybody has a voice. Um, sometimes I forget whose voice is who, <laughs> but they all have silly voices and that's kind of how we've done it. And then um, I usually try and watch like a YouTube video or something after to show the animal so she can kind of see what they're doing. Um, so if, if, if that sounds like something that would be really difficult for your child, you might want to look at the early years. Um, yeah, I'd say the, the Burgess Animal Book for Children is the hardest part. Um, and then the chapter books like Winnie the Pooh, there's really not that many pictures either. Um, maybe one picture every other page and sometimes they're they're small. So just think about that. If, you're, if your child can listen to a story without a lot of pictures, I think that would be the big thing. Um, now, the, the other thing is if you have younger children tagging along, because I have a almost two-year-old that is also at home with us. Um, I'm actually planning on starting him with the early years volume one. Maybe in January we'll start. Um, yeah, so for right now, he just kind of does what Big Sister does. He'll sit here. He, I mean, he kind of listens to the story. Um, 
but mostly he just like colors. He likes to do, when we do the space mission and we have the blocks, he likes to do the blocks with her. Uh, he helped build our spaceship that we have to, we had to build, I think it was in week 10, 9 or 10. Um, so he has his own spaceship, and so when we do the space mission, he'll sit in his spaceship. Um, and then the painting, he obviously loves to do, do the painting. I think that the, the picture study is great for all ages, really. Everybody's going to like it. So, yeah, so my, my point just is if you have a young Tagalog, they can, they can totally do this with you. Um, they won't be able to do, you know, like the worksheets and all this kind of stuff, but... But they do get to join in on, on enough stuff, like join in on the space mission and join in on the picture study. So they do, they do get to have fun, too. Um, so I think that's all I have to say. I hope I've given a good um, introduction to Blossom and Roots Kindergarten. We love it. I'm a total fangirl. Like, it, it, it really it works so well for us. Uh, you know, I looked at, at so many different things. I love, I love curriculums, and so I go out and I buy everything there is, and I want to try everything. Um, and this is the, the first one that I got that I love everything that we do. I really do. I think it's all great. It's so well done. Um, if you can catch it on sale, it's such a great deal. It really is. Um, but if you don't catch it on sale, it's totally worth the, the regular price. It really is. And I'll be honest, I've bought <laughs> early years, volume one and two and kindergarten and first grade. And I'm thinking about go ahead and getting third grade, second grade and third grade at this sale. Cause you know, I know I'm going to end up using them anyway. Um, yeah, so I'm totally in love. It works. It works really well for us. Um, the only thing I would say is if your child is a bit more advanced um, in math, you might want to add something. Um, the the math in this space mission wasn't really enough on its own for us, so we're doing we're doing right start with it. Um, and then if you want to do an extra phonics too, but that's totally up to you. You don't have to. I know a lot of people want to do very gentle introduction to schooling, and this is definitely definitely gentle. It's, it's, it's really nice. I've, I really, my daughter has never been like, oh, I don't want to do this. I really, we, we haven't had any issues with this at all. Sometimes with the Burgess animal book, I'll let her and her brother, you know, color or play a game with it. Um, and, and that's, that's been about it. Everything else she's been really into. Um, and it's really, she's has such a love for art now, which I'm really excited about. So, I think that's everything. You know, I, I'm sure I'm going to think of something else after I stop recording.